Sorry guys, just a quick video on something that I really struggled a few weeks back when I bought the F90 M5. Uh, this car, as many other BMWs, have an electronic or electric uh, parking brake, or the e-brake, whatever you guys want to call. And uh, I ran across an issue, which is, this car was sitting in the trailer right in front of my garage. I had to unload the car because it was a, it was a rental trailer, okay? The, my, my hire was going to expire in 45 minutes. Uh, oh man, it was, it was a nightmare. Just because I didn't, well, the car didn't have a battery. The car had a front crash, so the power fuse most likely blew up. The car doesn't have a battery. Uh, and I had to somehow release the parking brake because it was on. Uh, I didn't really know what to do. When, I, when they loaded the car onto the trailer, the car was actually forklifted onto the trailer. I drove it home, and uh, when I got here, the whole nightmare started. So I thought I'll just make a quick video because it took me a while to realize how the system works. Uh, in some of the older cars, or even on my E70 X5M, uh, it is an electric brake. However, there is a wire in the trunk, I believe, that you can pull a release, and that thing actually releases the calipers. This is not how these cars work. Okay, so this is an F90 M5. Same thing for the G30, some of the new 7 series, uh, the X7, I think, is pretty much the same. So. Let me get the wheel out and I'm going to show you what's behind the caliper and what do you need to do to release it or even if you're replacing a brake pad that might be useful because who knows maybe the car is unlocked you don't have access to the keys or your battery just died whatever it is let me show you how it works Now, with the wheel off, we're going to be able to see the caliper. Uh, and at the back of the caliper, you're going to have a couple of wires. Now, depending on the car, you may or may not have a brake pad wear sensor, which is this guy. And just at the back of the caliper here, you're going to see another one, which is for the motor. See this big chunky guy here? Let me see if I can flip the camera. Yeah, I can flip the camera around. So looking from behind and under the knee. So this big guy here is a motor. All right. Uh, let me get this out of here. And uh, I'm going to show you guys uh, this pretty much two ways that we can release this caliper. I'm going to first thing I'm going to do. I'm going to show you guys first how to remove this motor It's going to make it easier for you to understand what's behind it and uh, what's the correct way of doing it. Now for this car you're going to need a Torx 30 and first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to remove the plug out of the motor, yeah, that's being disconnected and then I'm going to remove the two bolts that hold the motor in place and with the motor there's going to come out a bracket as well which holds the wiring harness for them. Uh, now it's uh, it's just a bit inconvenient because first, this area of the suspension is actually full of uh, brake dust. So you're making a bit of a mess. You, you get dirty really easily. But nevertheless, there's a job to be done. We're going to do it. Now, this is the motor, okay? This is what actuates your parking brake. Uh, it's a 12 volts motor, so basically what it does is uh, it's got the motor here, a couple of gears, a reduction, and it's got this spindle right in the center, uh, which is equivalent to a Torx uh, 45, okay? This is what we're going to use. So basically what happens is when you click the button inside of your car and you activate the parking brake, uh, it sends 12 volts to this unit. The motor activates and turns this spindle one direction, making the screw inside of the caliper seize the brake pads against the disc, and that's how your parking brake is activated. When you do the opposite, when you undo the parking brake, when you click it up, so it sends the reverse polarity to this motor. It's going to spin on the different direction, on the opposite direction. It's going to retract that spindle on the inside and it's going to release the brake pads, uh, causing the parking brake off in that sense. So 
Now, I wanted to take this thing off for two reasons. First, I'm going to explain you guys how to release, because this is the motor off, doesn't mean that the parking brake is released. What you have to do is you have to get your T35, sorry, your T45. Uh, you're going to put this at the back of your caliper. And Now, if I turn this clockwise, let's see what's going to happen. I mean, I know what's going to happen. If I turn this clockwise a few times, uh, I'm just finding a bit hard to film and <laughs> hold everything together at the same time. But look, now that I turn clockwise a few turns, see the parking brake is off. Yeah. Now, this is where it gets interesting because uh, you can do that to manually release the parking brake. However, if you do have a spare battery, connect the wires in here. These are 12 volts. Uh, if you connect it on one way and it doesn't work, invert the polarity on them. And all that it is, if you can see inside, that's like two little plugs. So you're going you're gonna to need a tiny little adapter for the wires. Once you plug the two wires here, you just hook them up to a battery. And this thing is going to spin clockwise or anti-clockwise. And as we just seen, if it spins clockwise, you're going to release the parking brake. If it spins anti-clockwise, you're going to apply the parking brake. So... Anyway, I think uh, that's it. So I hope this video was helpful. Maybe it wasn't, but this is the sort of the stuff that you should have on top of your head so you don't actually struggle like I did a few weeks ago trying to get a car out of the trailer when the parking brake is on. Anyway, that's it for today. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.